Hello students. In this video, we're going to use variation of parameters to solve a second order linear constant coefficient non-homogeneous ODE. So the difference here is that on the right hand side, it's not zero, it's a function of x. So we're going to need a slightly different formulation um, for coming up with a solution to an ODE like this. All right, so we begin by first considering the um, homogeneous ODE. So in the parlance of differential equations, um, we're going to obtain a fundamental set of solutions. So the way that we do that is we solve the homogeneous ODE. Now homogeneous, remember, means that when we move all the dependent variables, all the y's, to one side, if what we have left on the right-hand side is zero, that's a homogeneous equation. This equation up here is non-homogeneous. We have a non-zero term on the right-hand side. But in order to solve this equation, we first solve the homogeneous part. Because remember that all forms of o solutions to ODEs um, are the homogeneous equation plus a, I'm sorry, a homogeneous solution plus a particular solution. Okay, so um, in order to solve the homogeneous ODE and obtain this fundamental set of solutions, we um, write the characteristic equation, we either use the quadratic formula or we factor this equation, we get the roots, and then we plug them into the, ex uh, the exponentials. So here we have e to the 2x and e to the minus x. And then our complementary function is or the solution to the homogeneous equation is c1 e to the 2x plus c2 e to the minus x. So again, the homogeneous equation has the arbitrary constant associated with it. Now, we need the particular solution, because remember, all solutions to ODEs, there'll be this complementary solution plus per a particular solution. So we're going to use the variation of parameters formula. Now, that is constructed by taking it an unknown function u1 times y1, which we have here, our y1 is e to the 2x, plus u2 times y2, where y2 is e to the minus x. Now the whole difficulty in variation of parameters is finding the u1 and u2. Okay, so that's what we're going to spend the rest of our time in this video doing, is locating this u1 and u2. Now there are two formulas for doing so. I'm not going to drive the formulas, but I'm going to go through where one, one view of the formulas um, for u1 and u2. So um, they, if you go through the proof of variation of parameters, you end up with a step like this one here, where you have u1 primed, so you don't know u1, um, but you know u1 primed, um, or you're going to find u1 primed. You don't know u2, um, nor do you know u2 primed, but you get this system of equations where you can actually solve for u1 primed and u2 primed. So this is a linear system of equations. And we can solve this linear system of equations using Kramer's rule. So um, if we look at u1 primed here, this column, that becomes this variable here. If we write this as a linear system. And u2 gets written down here. Um, and then the right-hand side is a 0 and f of x. Now what you have here, this matrix, this is really the Ronskian matrix. Okay, this is the Ronskian. You just take the functions, put them in the first row, then you take the derivative, put them in the second row, and you have something called the Ronskian. So in order to solve u1 primed, I'm going to use Kramer's rule. That means I'm going to take the determinant of this matrix, put that in the denominator, that's the Ronskian. And in the numerator, because it's u1 primed, I'm going to replace the first column, 1 being the first column, with the right-hand side. The second column, I'm just going to put y2 and y2 primed. So I'm going to leave that alone. Likewise, for u2 primed, I'm going to use Kramer's rule. So I'll take the determinant of that matrix there. That's the Ronskian. And then it's u2, so I'm going to replace the second column with the right-hand side and leave the first column left alone. Now we're ready. Um, if I take the determinant at the top, I get 0 minus y2 times f of x divided by the Ronskian. The minus sign comes because it comes from this determinant in the numerator. u2 primed means I take y2 times f of x, and then I divide by the Ronskian. So I have u2 primed. And then if you want to access u1 and y, uh, u2, 
then you integrate the two of those. Okay, so to get, you have u1 prime, there's this term here, but if you want to get u1, you just integrate. You have u2 prime, there's this term here, you just integrate. Now, really, for variation of parameters, all you need are these two formulas down here. y1 is equal to negative sine integral of y2 f of x divided by the Ronskian, where the Ronskian is this determinant, where you have the fundamental set of solutions in the first row, and then their derivatives in the second row. Likewise, y, u2 is equal to y1 f of x divided by the Ronskian, and then you integrate that. Um, some people like to start variation of parameters up here using Kramer's rule. Other people just like to grab the formulas and just use the formulas. Okay, well, now that we have the formulas, we'll just exploit them. So if I take y2, which is e to the minus x, and I multiply it by the right-hand side, e to the 3x, of course, I'm going to get an e to the 2x, right? Okay. Now, the Ronskian, this um, w here, I just go back up here, and I plug in my fundamental set of solutions. That's why I needed these. So I put e to the 2x and e to the minus x, minus x in the top row. I differentiate them. So the derivative of e to the 2x is e to the 2x times 2 from the chain rule here. The derivative of e to the minus x is e to the minus x times minus 1 because of the chain rule here. Then I take the determinant. So I get an e to the 2x times e to the minus x. I add the exponents. I get an x, but this minus sign survives. When I multiply this way, I get a negative sign, and I have a 2 times e to the 2x times e to the minus x. I add the exponents, 2x minus x is x. I add those together, I get minus 3 e to the x. So the Ronskian is minus 3 e to the x. So I'll put that in the denominator here. It will also be the denominator of this term as well. So you only have to calculate it once. y1, as I put them in this order, is e to the 2x, and f of x is e to the 3x. Now, um, you might be concerned, you know, what if I swapped y2 and y1, okay? What if my y1 was e to the 2x and my y2 was um, e to the minus, uh, my y1 was e to the minus x or something like, somehow you swap it. That's okay, don't worry. Everything will work out. Your Ronskian will reverse direction. You'll change the sign there. You'll, and then this minus sign would pop over here. And so everything will, everything will work out just fine. There's nothing special about the order in which I chose my functions. I could have reversed them and I would have gotten the same result. Okay, so don't panic. All right, so um, now we're just gonna simplify this term here. So remember, this was e to the 2x divided by e to the x gives us an e to the x. The integral of e to the x is e to the x. The minus minus gives us a positive and we have a one third. Here we have an e to the 5x divided by e to the x is e to the 4x. The integral of e to the 4x is 1 fourth e to the 4x, and then we multiply it by minus 1 third, we get a minus 1 twelfth e to the 4x. You could do this by u substitution. I'm just going to assume that you know how to integrate exponential functions, okay? So that gives us the u1 and u2. Well, we're not done yet, though. Remember, those, how, those terms have to get multiplied by the fundamental set of solutions um, to give us the, this construction for the particular solution. So we're almost done. So I'm going to write my formula for the particular solution. Uh, I'll have u1 times y1 plus u2 times y2, as I've defined them. So I put y1 in. That's e to the 2x and y2 e to the minus x. Then I'm going to take my u1, which was 1 third e to the x here, and my u2, which is minus 1 twelfth e to the 4x. And then I'm just going to do some basic uh, arithmetic here to simplify this. So I get 1 third e to the 2x times e to the x. I add the exponents, I get 3x. 4x minus x, when I add the exponents, gives me a 3x. Beautiful, I just do some fraction arithmetic. This is 4 twelfths minus 1 twelfth is 3 twelfths. 3 twelfths is 1 fourth e to the 3x. Now that I have my particular solution is 1 fourth e to the 3x, and I have my complementary function here, that satisfies the homogeneous equation. I just add the two together. Remember, all solutions to ODEs have this form, complementary function plus particular solution. So my final solution will be C1 e to the 2x plus C2 e to the minus x plus the particular solution, 1 fourth e to the 3x that I got from the variation of parameters formula. All right, that's how you solve a non-homogeneous ODE, uh, second order ODE, using variation of parameters formula. 
there is another uh, method for solving these types of equations called the method of undetermined coefficients, but I saved that for a different video. I just wanted to show you an example of how to use variational parameters for this case of differential equation. Okay, good luck.